Hello everybody, this is General Yanis and today in Death Car Tactics I'm looking at uh, the news uh, from the FAQ updates today for especially for Death Guard but uh, a lot of updates on the core book and on other meta style armies and for Death Guard uh, there are some very good uh, updates for that influence the inexorable of dance uh, maybe the summoning of demons uh, a, a couple of forge world units get some uh, interesting new rules and looking also at the meta uh, updates for some of the other armies. So let's uh, get started. So today, the 2nd of June uh, 2021, today we got a big uh, FAQ updates from Warhammer community uh, with some very interesting implications for Death Guard. So there was plenty of FAQs for a lot of the codexes, the core book, uh, the Imperial Armor Compendium, etc. So uh, in this video, I will be talking about the difficult ground update on the core book uh, and what they influence to an sorable advance, the army-wide rules, definitions, and the summoning of, of demons, then the Dreadclaw, Dreadclaw drop pod and the Greater Blight Drone from the Imperial Armor got some interesting updates, and then a bit of a meta watch what's happening for the Drukari, the, the the Dark Eldar that are that have been very strong in the meta and some very strong combos they have had. So let's uh, take a look. So let's start with a difficult ground. The definition of difficult ground terrain has been updated, so it clearly now affects movement characteristics and charge roll. So this is in the core book. So if a unit makes a normal move, advances or fall back and passes over a, a terrain feature with difficult ground, you have to subtract two inch from the move characteristic of that unit to a minimum of zero. And also for the charging, if you pass over such terrain, uh, you subtract two from that unit's charge roll. So this is uh, really good basically for Death Guard because this means that finally uh, our inexorable advance ability that our bubonic astartes infantry units will be are, are getting if we have uh, of course a death card uh, army uh, the the bubonic astartes infantry units are our lords and uh, the virion characters the plague marines the terminators possessed etc uh, and the inexorable advance says that uh, that um, the our our bubonic astartes infantry units can ignore any or all modifiers to its move characteristic so now the difficult ground affects move characteristics. So this uh, subtraction of two inches can be ignored and uh, any modifiers to the advance roll or charge rolls can be ignored. So uh, we can charge over uh, difficult terrain with no penalty, with not receiving a two inch penalty. So finally, uh, these pesky trees and woods will not slow us more down. Uh, we are slow enough to begin with. So now at least we can uh, move more freely and make charges uh, more freely across the, the table, even passing, um, ignoring the difficult ground. So this is really a good, uh, a good change. And basically the FAQ for our inexorable advance uh, was removed from the Death Guard Codex FAQ. So really good stuff for the inexorable advance. And then uh, there was clarifications to the army-wide rules, and there has been a very big discussion in the forums for Death Guard. Uh, can we summon demons? What, what can we do? Will we lose the contagions, etc.? And uh, the core book now uh, has an FAQ update uh, to define that if every unit in your army rules, uh, they are determined in the master army, master army step before the battle or before the missions begin. Uh, and, the, and after that, you are not checking again. So you check once after you have selected your army. Uh, and, and then if the condition is satisfied, for example, then for us, we would be getting our army-wide rules, for example, would give us contagions. Then if we add units later on to some other rules, then we are not checking again that every unit has the death card uh, a keyword. So uh, units added later in the game will not impact those rules. So for example, our death card contagions. And this uh, theory crafting here should open up the possibility to summon chaos demons in the game without losing the contagion abilities. Because if we add something later on in the game with some other rules, uh, we are not checking anymore to see that all our units have death card uh, uh, keywords. Uh, the death card codex, as many have pointed out also in the forums and the discussions, doesn't include the summoning rules anymore. 
but in the Chaos Demons Codex, it is stated that uh, if we read the Demonic Ritual, which is the abilities that many demon, uh, demon Chaos Demons uh, have, any, any Chaos character uh, can summon demons uh, with a Demonic Ritual ability. So this, uh, since, since this uh, Chaos Demon Codex still is, is, is valid, we should be able to use that uh, to summon demons uh, like we could before, and now we will not be losing our contagions uh, with this rule. But uh, th this is at least how I, I interpret the rules right now. Of course, the Chaos Demons uh, will also receive an update of the Codex. Maybe this will change, but I, at least this is my this is my interpretation of, of these rules. And uh, please leave some comment below if you disagree or you have some other other interpretation for these rules. Uh, then uh, looking at the Forge World units, um, so there were some clarifications. Uh, the Greater Blight Rhone uh, previously was a bit uh, strange because it had the Nurgle's Gift uh, ability instead of Contagions of Nurgle, and now with the FAQ it's getting the proper Contagions of Nurgle ability, not only the minus one toughness. Uh, I always have believed that this was a, a let's say, <laughs> a syntax error, uh, but now we can properly uh, use. Um, the, the, this unit will have contagions as any other uh, in our death card codex and it can properly be used to spread other contagions as well for example with the flash outbreak stratagem and this is especially strong for the greater blight drone because it's basically our fastest uh, unit in the codex that has contagions so it can be used to, to forward spread uh, the contagion. So, so I think really welcome clarification that this is this is uh, it can be applied to spread uh, not only the minus one toughness but also other contagions with a flash outbreak. Finally, uh, one unit that a lot of people have requested uh, that I should review was the Dread Claw Drop Pod from Forge World, um, uh, but previously. Uh, looking at its drop pod assault, it lacked the rules uh, to allow it to disembark its units, even if it can land with uh, transport units in turn one. It couldn't disembark them as the rules were, were written in the Imperial Armor Compendium. Finally, uh, with this FAQ, they have added the following sentence, like the Loyalist counterpart, that any units embarked within this transport can immediately disembark. And it's actually can and not must. Uh, and if they do so, they must be set up more than an inch away from any any models. Basically, this probably this would allow us to have, in essence, some forward deployment of, of units, which can be really interesting. So I will, of course, have to do an in-depth review on this one. So stay tuned for for uh, deep diving into those rules and the applicability here. And then uh, uh, finally, as a a quick meta watch looking at the very strong Drukari codex and the Drukari armies. Uh, there has been some updates in the FAQ for the Drukari. So the raiders have uh, seen their points increase to 95 points, getting a 10% 10 point uh, power hike. And the Drazars, uh, the very strong uh, melee character, uh, increases to 145 points, also 10 points more from 135. Um, and uh, I've already reviewed some of these uh, very strong units and, and combos uh, previously in the in the channel, and um, a lot of the a lot of the Drukari armies that have been winning tournaments had five or six raiders, and Drazar has been in many of these lists, etc. And and in the in the FAQ there were corrections to many of the strong combos I also uh, looked at. Uh, so for example, the Dark Technomancer's ability doesn't apply anymore to uh, auto hit liquefiers. This uh, update uh, was very strong, giving them much more power and not, uh, not uh, with an auto hit weapon, there was no downside to taking this, uh, this enhancement. And then one uh, very strong combo was the succubus with razor flails, uh, giving two times attacks. And then the competitive edge, which allowed uh, everything that didn't uh, damage to be uh, to create a new attack and then uh, with a two times then it would generate two times new attacks so it was possible for a succubus uh, to make 42 attacks if they missed all the, the first <laughs> the first attacks but now it's uh, corrected in the FAQ for the core book allowing only one new attack per the ones that don't do do the damage so that was also corrected 
and then uh, Drukari has had benefits for their patrols. Uh, previously, they could take triple patrols, for example, paying zero command points for the patrols, but also the warlord would give them pl plus two command points if he was in a patrol. Uh, basically, in essence, they would be starting with 14 command points. Now the benefits for the patrols, uh, they go to none, so they don't cost anything still, but you don't get the plus two to have your warlord in a patrol. So Drukari now would also start with the 12 uh, command points like any uh, every other uh, enemy, uh, every other army for the 2000 point game brackets. So final thoughts and summary. So uh, a lot of interesting new things uh, and, and really good good stuff for Death Card overall so far. Uh, the inexorable advance especially now is working properly and can actually do something meaningful on the tabletop. Summoning seems to be open up again and be a viable option. And the improvements for the Dreadclaw giving some options for forward deployment. And I will be looking more at for to do an in-depth review. Also some, some corrections for, for some very powerful uh, Dark uh, Eldar Drukari uh, combos. So what do you think about all these new rules? What are your takes for the Sorobo Advance, for the summoning, for the Forge World models? Uh, leave some comment below. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this video, please press like and subscribe to my channel where I will bring you more Death Guard Tactics videos and also looking at other armies. And visit my Patreon page if you want to support the channel further. I appreciate all your efforts and very big thanks to my patrons uh, for, for all their support. And with these words, General Yanis is signing out. Stay safe out there and bye-bye.